Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Hi, and welcome to a very casual Into the Multiverse. I'm Josh Peck, and with me as... Actually, it's Joe Artis in for Josh Peck, <laughs> whose immune system decided to fail. Right, Christina? Right. And yeah. now you're stuck with me. I know. He's just being a big baby. What's that about? I don't know. I think he's being a baby. He's being a baby. I think you and I both know that when he says he's sick, he's mm -hmm. probably at home with his Xbox, right? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's 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 at least go with that storyline, right? Wait, that's, is that not Josh over there? Yeah, I thought I was, Josh is actually in the studio. I was going to say, <laughs> he's not here to defend himself, but he's sitting right over there. I will defend Josh Peck. Yeah. I love Josh Peck, and not the Disney guy. No. And so he's kind of introduced himself. We're in the studio with a very special guest today, the director, the writer, the producer of the up-and-coming documentary film, Hollow Earth Chronicles Episode one, The Dark Chambers, Justin Fall. Welcome to the program. Ah, thanks, Joe. Christina, thanks for having me. Sorry for the hilarious intro. I had to mess with Josh. It's, you know, we have a very dark satirical humor. We go back and forth at lunch and often uh, we'll find ourselves in these comedic situations. It's okay. And I mean, my film's not I serious. Figured, you it's, know. it's just Justin, so we can, we can clown <laughs> we can around a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. No, no, it's great um, to be here. And as Josh knows, when anytime we've done shows together, well, a while back at least, we'd get a little wild and, you know, it's like you, you throw in a little bit of comic relief in a serious situation <laughs> and uh, just to kind of take the weight off, so it's yeah. good. Uh, I, and sadly, I pick on his immune system. The truth is, Josh is very sick the last couple of days and he is sitting in the studio uh, basically watching to make sure I don't say anything uh, too out of keeping with his program. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. I and I don't know that okay. I introduced you, but Christina Peck. Yeah, I'm here. Welcome to the program. Well, She's thank also you. keeping me accountable. Justin, let's let's get to this thing. Now, you have a, uh, an up and coming documentary film. It's going to be the subject of at least two of the Skywatch Network programs uh, syndicated all over the world. Uh, Hollow Earth Chronicles. And you were able to do something with this that was un. Precedented, and, and let's get serious for a minute because I want people to understand this documentary is not silly and the cast of people that you interviewed. How on earth did you get, this has never been done before, the A-list lineup of speakers on this film have never been combined in one documentary project at the same time ever. How on earth did you pull that off? I didn't pull it off. Uh, it, it's really crazy, Joe. Uh, what happened was... I'm um, on the phone talking with Tom, Tom Horn, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, God really blessed me with Tom as a friend years ago, and we're having a conversation. I'm telling him about the film idea, and he says, well, who do you want in the film? And I said, well, this is who I got so far, and I'm breaking some things down. It wasn't but 24 hours later that the entire cast had signed on to do the film. Oh. It, it was oh. a... It was a miracle. Now, who are some of the people on this film for the viewers that still don't know uh, this roster that we're describing? Who, who's in the movie? Well, um, as Nick Abraham says, and he's a friend of mine, he says, you've got an Ocean's Eleven cast, and it really is. I mean, uh, you've, got, you've got Steve Quayle, Tom Horn, L.A. Marzulli, Chief Joseph Riverwind, um, Josh Peck. Josh Peck, of course, is in there. Derek Gilbert. Oh, then it's got to be good. Yeah, but yeah, we have Jim Wilhelmson, and, and I think that's a really important element yes. of the film. Speaking about Jim Wilhelmson, and this is really awesome, Jim Wilhelmson was one of the original Hollow Earth guys from a biblical perspective. Articles on his website, YouTube videos, speaking about it at conferences, uh, put you know information in his book, Beyond Science mm -hmm. Fiction. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> when you're dealing with Jim Wilhelmson, not only is he a veteran in this research, but he was really close personal friends with David Flynn. And we're dealing with two men who are so far beyond the understanding of most of us. Right. The, the, the ideas that these guys are coming up with or were coming up with and, and, and Jim still is, it's just, it blows the mind of the average man, including myself. Right. And to be able to work with Jim Wilhelms on this project, I can't begin to tell you what an honor and a blessing it is. I mean, Jim is one of the original guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jim came over to, uh when we were living in Michigan, Josh and I had this apartment and he came over and we had a, a little segment. We called it 
coffee with Jim. <laughs> and he was talking <laughs> about the hollow earth a little bit. And um, that was the first I've heard of it. But he about. really, he takes you to another level <clears throat> of understanding of it. And he really ties it in uh, from a deeper level of history and not, not just biblical history, but world history. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important when you're dealing with the hollow earth is understanding how real it is. It's not a new idea. We're dealing with something that goes back to the days of the biblical writers. So mm -hmm. speaking of that, what is the hollow earth? Yeah, we don't want to lose people. Yeah. So for the people that are out there, what is hollow earth? Why the documentary Hollow Earth Chronicles and why the release of it this year? Yeah. A lot of people think it's a new idea. A lot of people say, well, it's, it's 100 years old or less or 200 years old. But I submit to you that we go back to scripture and we find out in Job specifically, Satan tells God, and God asks Satan, where have you come from? And he says, I've come from the earth, walking to and fro, up and down, back and forth, up and down in the earth. It's a very important aspect of scripture. Uh, not only do we see elements of extra dimensionalism taking place there in that very action, but we see that there is something going on in the earth that requires Satan's attention. Mm. That right there tells me I need to look into this. I believe we need to know our enemy, especially in the days we're living. We need to understand the end times deceptions that are taking place. Mm -hmm. So there's some kind of a demonic complex in the earth. Satan is going back and forth to it, operating there. I wanted to know what exactly that meant after reading that passage in Job. Well, what I found out was cultures around the world hold to this view of a supernatural inner earth world. Their gods of old, which we would know to be the fallen angels or the watchers, some, some call them the watchers, but you know, you're getting into two different classes of, of fallen angels. But when you're dealing with these cultures of the world, you're going to find out that many of them have oral tradition that take them back to the hollow earth, right. even their origin. Some of the Native American Indian tribes have uh, oral tradition that they came from subterranean cities. Mm -hmm. Some of them came from caves. And I think that's one thing that's really fascinating is that you get into the cave system where some of these tribes say they've, they've come from. And there's more than one tribe on record that believed that they were, uh, their point of origin was inside of a cave. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. So you get into the cave and then you find out that the cave goes deep and far. And before you know it, you're in a subterranean city capable of holding over 5,000 people. Oh, that's interesting. And these cities are thousands of years old. Uh, we believe... I say myself and, and some of the researchers that are in the film, and Timothy Albrino's in the film as well, uh, L.A. Marzulli, Steve Quayle, Tom Horn. I mean, the list goes on. But Timothy and I have had some really good discussions about the idea of subterranean cities and mm -hmm. even why we believe they're antediluvian. Well, mm -hmm. even in the Mayan, uh, it, it, Mayan beliefs, there are different caverns, and, and, they, and they say they're inhabited by different beings. Like there's one cavern, one level down, there's like alligator people, or there's another one that there's... Um, uh, there's sharks or shark looking beings all the way down to, uh, I believe, nine levels of nine different caverns where these beings, they say, uh, originated or they come from. What, what's interesting about that idea, Christina, is the different cultures. Some, some have these, these entities they call alligator people, mm -hmm. lizard people, mm -hmm. serpent people. Yes. We see this reoccurring <clears throat> theme in the, we'll just say the esoteric belief systems. And when you see it showing up all around the world, from people who have no connection amongst them. I mean, literally, these people don't know anything about these other cultures. These are all ancient cultures, no connections. Mm -hmm. They're all saying similar stories. Yes. They're all coming into contact with similar entities. That tells us as, as Christians and as researchers that there's something to it. Yeah. And then we find out the definition of a seraphim angel, and there's connections with serpentine qualities, mm -hmm. fiery serpents. That's one thing that we focus on in the film in a segment uh -huh. is the idea of the serpent people. Yes. And as, uh, as I've spoken with Derek about and Sharon is uh, there's a class of, of serpent entities that are known as the Naga people. Oh, right. Oh yeah. You get over into India, you're dealing with the Naga people mm -hmm. and they, I mean, they would abduct people. They had a thirst for human blood, mm -hmm. a hunger for human flesh. They would take women, get this, same old Genesis 6 narrative, mm -hmm. the Nagas would abduct women, co-create with them. Mm. So I want to know if this is something that world leaders are aware of, and if they are, do they have a motivation to keep this from public view? We're going to ask Justin that very question when we come back right after this. 
in 2006, one month from the day Mark Taylor retired from his post as a career firefighter. He was suddenly overcome by a Holy Spirit guided supernatural vision of the future. This revelation, as the world would soon discover, was a message to the most powerful nation on earth. The Spirit of God says, I have chosen this man, Donald Trump, for such a time as this. It's time to embrace our glorious American destiny. Anything we can dream for our country, we can achieve for our country. America will once again stand hand in hand with Israel and the two shall be as one. I want the Israeli people to know that the United States stands with Israel. The dollar will be the strongest it has ever been in the history of the United States and will once again be the currency by which all others are judged. The economy is booming under this president. We're up 254 points, 21,000 on the Dow. They will say things about this man, the enemy, but it will not affect him. Well, he's kind of a comic book figure. I mean, he's a show off. He's a sideshow who threatens to swallow the Republican Party. He was attacked by other people who were running with him. His poll numbers would go up, theirs would go down, even to the point where they got kicked out of the race. He would not be the commander in chief we need to keep our country safe. Donald, adults learn not to interrupt you. Yeah, yeah. We are suspending our campaign. I am suspending my campaign. This next election will be a clean sweep for the man that I have chosen. Donald Trump will never be elected president of the United States. It still looks like Hillary's the next president. On election day 2016, the world witnessed the impossible when in the final hour, the map turned red. Donald J. Trump is the president of the United States. Donald Trump is going to be our president. Well, my crystal ball's been shattered into atoms here because I predicted the exact opposite of what happened. But the election of 2016 was only the beginning. Mark Taylor, author of the Trump prophecies that foretold Donald Trump's unlikely victory and the stock market reaction that would follow, has something new to say about what is coming next. Something that will change the future of America and the world forever. There's a bigger picture that the church is not seeing right now. The Trump Prophecies, the astonishing true story of the man who saw tomorrow and what he says is coming next. Unprecedented spiritual encounters are breaking out all around the world. Prophetic words of foreknowledge, angelic intervention, healing and miracles point to something big about to sweep the globe. Now, for the first time ever, Skywatch TV is proud to present the Supernatural Awakenings Three Works Collection. In this incredible, must-have compilation, you'll receive the Trump Prophecies. Walk with authors Mark Taylor and Mary Colbert through the astonishing biographical journey of Mark's life as a third generation firefighter, where a Holy Spirit guided prophecy in 2011 foretold Donald Trump's unlikely presidential victory. But now, for the first time ever, the world will learn how that incredible win was only part of the electrifying revelation that Mark says will certainly unfold in the months ahead. Now you can be amongst the first to understand what is coming next. Also included in this groundbreaking collection, Angels on Assignment Again. You'll be amazed as best-selling author and prophecy expert Jennifer LeClaire chronicles the presence of modern-day angelic activity, the awe-inspiring and sometimes fearsome encounters these majestic beings create. But why is their presence suddenly increasing around the world? Jennifer LeClaire's expertise will leave you exhilarated and convinced something big is about to unfold. Finally, you'll also receive in this limited time special offer, best-selling author Reverend Donna Howell's brand new release, Radicals. This cutting edge masterpiece examines how James, the half brother of Jesus, exposed the sins of the church in his day to give life to the liberating power of the gospel. Using that inspired text as a catalyst for truth seekers everywhere, Radicals examines how post-denominational Christians today can also avoid mistakes and become infused now with supernatural power. Get all three new releases at the discount price of only $29.95 plus shipping and handling while supplies last. The Supernatural Awakenings Three Works Collection will only be available in this unprecedented offer for a very limited time. So make sure to place your order now at the Skywatch TV store.
Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. This is Joe Artis Horn. I'm joined with Christina Peck. Yeah, I'm still here. And writer, director of the up and coming documentary film, Hollow Earth, Justin Fall. Welcome back, Justin. Thank you. Uh, before we went to the break, I asked you a question. We're talking about the Hollow Earth. Are world leaders, also known as governments, entities, uh, higher echelon powers, are they aware of some of the research that you've done and do they have motivation to conceal this? Why aren't more people talking about this? One of the fascinating things that we find out in the Hollow Earth research is that the leaders of the world for thousands of years have known about the subterranean world. They've known about the entities that inhabit the inner earth. And getting <clears throat> to the inner earth has always been a part of their agenda. And we're seeing this even today. Um, one of the things that blows my mind is Nicholas Rorick, who was a Russian channeler. A lot of people know him. He's considered a, a hero and even a, an occult scholar um, of his generation. Mm -hmm. Nicholas Rorick would travel around with this box. And this little box was said to uh, contain Osiris's DNA. Now, digging deeper, you're going to find out that there's a little more to it than that. The people who are in the know in the New Age movement, they say that it contained the Chintamani stone. Chintamani stone. And this stone is said to be a esoteric, what's the word? How can I even put this? It's almost like an amulet. Mm -hmm. mm. You know, you hear that word in movies sometimes. It's like an amulet stone with power, with energy. And they, they believe that it's a, an alien stone that has to be returned to the entities that run and rule over inner earth. Mm. So Nicholas Rorick is on record as going into Shambhala through the Himalayan mountains, taking this stone back to the entities who are the leader, the, the leadership council of the inner earth, basically. Nicholas Rorick was really good friends with many of our high ranking government officials. He's on record as being tight with the White House. And this was a major part of his mission, mm -hmm. kind of like a reverse role of what Enoch did. See, Enoch was kind of the messenger guy between God and the fallen angels. Well, Nicholas Rorick was doing favors for the fallen angels, but not good favors. Mm. He was operating inside the occult with these entities. And many people believe that the key to the hollow earth is what's called the, some people call them the nine, but others call them the ascended masters. Mm -hmm. You will need to channel these entities, people are told, in order to be able to have your doorway into the hollow earth. Now, people can actually go into the subterranean cities. You can take you know, trips, if you will. But there are people who get taken in and not just taken into the city itself, but they experience what we can only describe as an extra dimensional projection or a spiritual projection. So they experience a different world of amazement than, say, Indiana Jones would find if he just went down there. Okay. Wow. Okay. And it reminds me of the passage where Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And somehow Satan was able to show Jesus the kingdoms of the world in but a moment of time. Now, that doesn't make sense on a rationalistic level. How do you show someone the kingdoms of this world in a moment of time? Well, it had to be some type of projection, an extra dimensional projection for that to have been possible. Right. That's my stance on that verse, and I stick to that. But knowing how Satan has the power to bend, to project, to deceive. He's a master of deception. Right. Yes. There has to be something going on with some of these stories of the hollow earth where people go in and they see this world of amazement. Right. Because you've got other people like Gilgamesh and others who have gone on these underworld journeys and they have to go through hell, literally, before they get to see what they portray as paradise. Right. So not everybody has the same results when they try to trek down into the inner earth. I overheard you talking with Derek uh, yesterday that this was this belief in hollow earth was so fundamental to even Hitler's worldview that the Nazis themselves uh, identified with some of this research. And you talk about that also in your film. That's a major part of our film. The Nazis, we'll just say the nucleus of the Nazi party was esoteric occult beliefs. It was a religion. See, people get politics and religion mixed up. It was both. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times they say, well, they were just a corrupt group of political tyrants, but that's not the case. They were religious. The core nucleus, whatever you want to call it, of the Nazi party 
was black magic. And Hitler, even as, as a youth in Vienna, was studying what we know today as theosophy. And this is getting into the teachings of Madame Blavatsky, Nicholas Rourke, who we've already mentioned, he was tied into that as well. And the religion of theosophy is dealing with this idea of what they call the root races, mm -hmm. that everything originated with these supernatural entities inside the earth. And the supreme of them were known as the Aryans. And now we, I know we don't have time to go into this other aspect. The film is going to break all this down, but you're dealing with this group of people that they're tall, white skinned, <clears throat> right. blonde hair, blue eyed. And it ties into an old book that the Nazis got their hands on. And this is an interesting, this is very interesting, but this book was literally the basis, the basis for their occult doctrine that told them that they were the watered down descendants of what was called the Vril Yah. Oh, that's interesting. <sighs> and the Vril Yah were an antediluvian supernatural race living inside the earth. Interestingly, mm -hmm. this drove the Nazis to do everything that they did. And interestingly, more so is the fact that you had the Thule Society of Germany that was the black magic society that did all these satanic rituals that were channeling the entities. But you had an upper echelon in the center of that called the Vril. Mm -hmm. The Vril was known as the power source of this inner world system that was harnessed by this race called the Vril Yah, which we would today call the Aryan race. Not Aryans as in human beings. We're talking supernatural fallen angel entities and their offspring. Right that had telepathic powers, that dealt with crystals, with rocks, amulets, if you will, that would project power. So we see these connections between all these different inner earth accounts within different religions, within different governments, and within, we'll even say, different races, because you have different types of entities and hybrids that were teaching these inner earth doctrines to mankind. Right. But here's what we have to remember. This is all prophetic, Joe. Christina, this is prophetic. This lines up with end times Bible prophecy. And that's why it's important for Christians to grab on to these things. Because what we find out in these religions is that they are planning and expecting the largest deception that's ever been plotted against mankind. Mm. And it goes back to the hollow earth. So in your film, as you guys are, are watching this, and, and some of you may be finding this a mix of, of, of emotions that range from fascinating to skeptical, um, this is not something I've ever been introduced before, why isn't more people talking about that? Well, that's exactly what I believe you're trying to do here, Justin, is to make people aware of, and, and I'm no stranger uh, being a member of Skywatch team. I've heard a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of things. I've read a lot of things. That's what we try to do here. In your film, so, so I, I, I come into this inherently with more of an open mind than, than maybe some because of my background. And of course, my father has written multiple books that have done really well on the subjects of prophecy and end time scenarios and things like this. But for your average listener out there, in the film, you're trying to almost spoon feed this. You're taking a very high level series of materials and you're trying to spoon feed it down uh, into a series of interviews that introduces them very slowly through a premise and then walks them through this, this very slow process of almost baby steps to, to understanding the hollow earth, its significant implications. Tell me about Admiral Byrd's diary. Admiral Byrd is a a legend, okay? Admiral Byrd is an American legend. Uh, many people call him a hero. He was a polar logistics guy. He was uh, an admiral, a polar explorer. First guy to fly over the North and South Poles. Admiral Byrd was a major player in the exploration of the North and South Poles for the United States of America. So we're not just dealing with some guy that just popped up overnight. Admiral Byrd was taken down into the hollow earth by UFOs that were donning Nazi symbols. But, but qualify him. Like yesterday, you and I were having lunch. You said he's one of the few people that have ever lived to wear his, you know, a medal with his own face on it. I mean, right. this guy was legitimate. Okay, uh, so he, he was really highly regarded by the government. He right. was the guy that would come out and tell the public the public version of what the government was doing, right? right. He would give them the official <laughs> right, story right. of why we're going to the North Pole, why we're going to the South Pole. And he is one of four people 
to wear a medal with his own face on it. Right. That doesn't happen. Okay. That's that's unheard Not of. Not often. Right. You've got two post commemorative postage stamps with Admiral Byrd on them. You've got tons of literature put out by the government praising Admiral Byrd, okay? Right. You've got replica maps of his journeys. So this is not a fringy broadcasting out of a garage. This man was reputable, legendary, documented, right, totally legitimate. The guy was a big, he, we'll just say he was a big timer. Big mm. timer. So when he comes out and he says that he's experienced some of these things, and it was on his deathbed nonetheless. Uh -huh. mm. That's what we see a lot of times with these guys who are, you know, they're major players in some of these government operations. They have a lot of secrets they're holding on to. And it's, it's in that moment before death where they start questioning what they've been fighting for their whole lives. Mm -hmm. And for him, he'd been holding all of these secrets, secrets about what happened in Antarctica, secrets about what took place at the North Pole, secrets that he was told he could never tell a soul about. And so on his deathbed, it's believed that this diary that came out, it was handed off to the right people mm -hmm. towards the end of his life so that his story could be shared with the world. Mm. Now, the contents of that. That's what I was going to ask you. So what whole, is he saying? That's a whole nother story. Do you want to give us a little nugget or do you want to oh, just. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> How are we on time? We're, we got about two minutes. No. Not enough time. Not enough time for Admiral Bird's diary. <laughs> but we have to understand that Bird had supernatural encounters in the North Pole and the South Pole, and he officially spoon fed information to the American public so that they would accept his expedition sure. as scientific research. Sure. But mm. the information that we find out via real history completely wipes wipes away any idea that this was a scientific mission. There was no science involved in what took place. These were supernatural, or as some like to say paranormal, experiences involving Nazis, extraterrestrials, inner Earth entities, and right. who knows what else. Right. We're talking laser beams firing right. out of UFOs. Well, guys, I, we're just about out of time, but I just want to say for the record, we, I've seen some, some clips from this film. Everything was shot beautifully in high resolution. Thank you. You have an all-star cast of, of some of the, I think, brightest minds on Earth that would deal with some of these subjects. You really don't want to miss this one. Maybe next time we get together, we can talk about the diary. Yeah, I'd like to do that. <laughs> Maybe dig, dig into a little deeper yeah, the diary. Yeah, more information But about there needs that. to be a warning on there because it's mind-blowing. Okay. <laughs> Luckily, we laid the path to let people know that this guy was an American hero. Right. You've got to keep that in mind. Okay, so Justin, will you come back and do another program? I would love to come do back and talk about it. one more multiverse. Absolutely. Even though Josh won't be with us next week either. But I have no. it on good authority, Christina, that you don't have to deal with me. No, let's see. Sharon Gilbert will be yeah. here. Sharon's going to do it. For Sharon a very, very interesting installation of Into the Multiverse. The documentary is Hollow Earth Chronicles by Justin Fall. It is going to be a, 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 the topic of discussion in a couple of the up-and-coming broadcast programs with Skywatch TV, so don't miss those. You'll also learn how you can get a copy of this in a very spe uh, special package directly from Skywatch. For Christina Peck... Justin Fall, I'm Joe Horn. Don't miss next week's installation of Into the Multiverse.